All right, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Um, I'm doing this video. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit different. I I kind of made it, um, you know, to to for some entertainment, but also to teach because even though we're dealing with the Matrix here, this is a very serious subject, and uh, I'm gonna try to cram in as much as I possibly can in the amount of time I have. So I have a couple of issues that I wanted to talk about. Um, so let's get straight to it. All right, first, <clears throat> let's deal with overpopulation, right? Um, there is no overpopulation. It doesn't exist because you can't, if you're talking about overpopulation, first you got to show me where are, are these massive populations of people because when we look here, we can see a, you know, I've been up and down Florida. I've been all up up and down in New York, all of the East Coast. Um, I've been in many different states. I've been to Mexico. There is no overpopulation because there's vast amounts of land, okay, just vast amounts of uh, open land. The federal, federal government keeps from everybody. And uh, so, you know, the overpopulation is just part of a, a – basically it's a, a – it's part of a depopulation program. Um, that's the first part. The second part is to contain the amount of people they have here from wandering off, right? So they want to keep you in your little box, in your little cage, like a hamster, okay? A hamster on a wheel. That's what they want to do with you. So when we look around here, where where is the overpopulation at? I don't see it. I don't see it. I mean, you just look. Just Google the vast amounts of, um, you know... Of pictures on Google and you won't see any overpopulation anywhere okay um you know and actually here check this out let's read here right this is by BBC BBC.com and it was done by a guy named EO Wilson I actually have one of his books I agree with some of the stuff he says other stuff is just propaganda and so we're gonna read here and take a look it says, if to take a conservative figure, 1% of this host is ants, blah, 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 their total population is 10,000 trillion, right? Now, we know this is just an estimation, right? Or really a guesstimation, but how can you even estimate that? How can you estimate how many ants are on the planet? You can't, and that's the problem, okay? But people take this as, you know, as this is factual or as even something remotely close to the truth and is not okay there's so much land available for the amount i mean have you ever been walking down the street and ran across the same person or you go to another neighborhood and you see the same person you knew from high school or something the odds of that happening if there were seven billion people on the planet are slim to none just out of probability if you got seven billion okay of uh, 400 million Americans out of 400 million for you to run into the same person and, and that you haven't seen in years will be almost impossible that, that, that those numbers just don't add up so there's not for for 400 million Americans and there's certainly not 7 billion I put the population really somewhere at the uh, I'm talking about world population now I probably put it at somewhere maybe at 300 million 300 million people probably on the whole planet, if that, and that's just, that's pushing, okay, now we're told that, you know, it, when you do the math, everyone can fit in this, in Texas, okay, everybody can fit inside Texas, if you look right here, you can squeeze everybody with land to grow food, and there'll still be this much land available, okay, I know this is a bad drawing of the United States, but whatever, it, it'll work for now. Okay, all right, we see depopulation here. Now we got, you know, all these New Yorkers and all of these people doing their little shopping, totally oblivious to what's really going on. I mean, all they need to do is Google the Georgia Guidestones, and I'll tell them everything. And, uh, you know, I'll put zombies up here because that's exactly what they are. And, uh, you, know, you know, if you just walk down here, you'll see all sorts of um, secret society symbolism. It's all over here, right? Okay. Okay, and here's another article. The human race can fit in New Zealand, right? And if you read this article, and we'll read it. I might make a part two of this, okay? So we'll come back and read this. But, it, you know, it's proof that 
you know, there is no overpopulation. So that's bullshit. All right. So now let's get to the to the point of this thing, right? What we're looking at here is the Grand Canyon, right? The Grand Canyon, if you look at these mountains here, these mountain, these, this is Grand Canyon, there's layers, okay? The layers aren't from 4 billion years of rock sediment and wind current and all this other bullshit they tell us, okay? It's not from that at all. And in fact, the earth is splitting and water's coming up through the cracks. And, and I'm, I'm going to get to that later. But the fact that you see patterns, right, means that Anytime you have a pattern, that means something constructed it, okay? Just like if it was random, there would be no pattern, okay? See, and this is the, the this dumbass philosophy that, um, you know, uh, supposedly that, you know, the, the randomness, the chaos forms patterns, okay? Whatever, whatever it is, the fact that you have patterns like this all across the planet, Okay, means that there's a creator. Okay, and we're gonna get to that. And uh, this is the moon, right? And um, uh, come on, this is the moon right here. And you know, there's some anomalies with the moon. Uh, we'll get to that later. Here's an animal on my head when I used to have my hair cut like that. Oh, by the way, go to Google and I mean not Google, YouTube, and type in Pangaea, the history of the continents. And if you notice, these kids are putting the continents together, but it's on a flat surface. You can't have Pangaea on a, on a globe. So there's some truth to Pangaea, and we'll get to that later. And we're going to talk about fast-shifting continents, because the planet is decaying, and it's decaying at a fast rate. Okay? Now, we're doing a lot of cramming here, all right? So here we go. Let's take a look. This is called Copen Climate Classification. Now, on this classification map, pretty much... The red area, right around this area, is where the majority of the plant life. Well, maybe the red area is desert, but right be below it is where you get majority of the plant life, right? Now, what you'll have here is you have these animals that are, uh, come on, uh, what's wrong with my keyboard here? All right, you have these animals here that lost their pigmentation, right? And um, you have this white rabbit, you have these polar bears, you know, as you get to where there's no sun, you lose coloring, right? So now, the reason these animals didn't just decide to go up into the cold area where there's no plant life, right? As we look right here, as you look at this climate classification chart, what happened was the continents moved and the animals didn't have time to retreat and go back to where because if you're in a place where there's warm warm weather there's food plenty of vegetation why would you go to the cold areas where there's no food and you almost become an endangered species the only reason you would do the only reason that would ever happen is if the land mass changed faster than you can get back to where you to where you were and to where the sun is and then you adapt to that climate because you wouldn't go somewhere where there's no food where it's where it's a tough time so here we're here we're gonna go again we're gonna talk about it because the earth is the king at a really fast rate and it's moving this mountain this I don't know what the hell you would call it a mountain but this has not been there four billion years Okay, this or 13 or 4 billion years, right? The age of the earth. This thing moves fast, right? And now he's taking a photograph on it. Okay, but this is the breaking up and it's moving really, really quick. Okay, this is a, another thing that's not a result of a fast, a slow moving earth. This is a result of rapid formations. Okay, this because you see patterns, you see these lines. These patterns are from a rapid. A rapid creation and a rapid tr transformation. Because I personally believe the sun and the moon are simply clocks. I believe there was a creator who created the earth and left it. Okay, he's looking, but he's not touching it. And after his time, after, I believe, 24,000 years, and I'm going to tell you why I think that date. After 24,000 years, I think the creator is going to come back when this earth is damn near half there deteriorated. Or it is a 24-hour, 24,000-year deterioration on the Earth, okay? Because the sun goes around the, around in a circle over a flat disk every 24 hours, just like hands on a clock, okay? So I'm going to get to that later. But now we, we could look at this right here, and you see these, actually? 
Let me hide that. All right, you see these right here? See these formations? This is from fast. This cave was created within seconds, and when the gap was created, when the cave was created, these fell, but they didn't have time to settle, and they, they cooled off before they settled, just like if you had Silly Putty, right? Just eh, let me hide that too. If you had Silly Putty, it would, it would, it, if it was hot, it would cool down and it would settle just like this. That's exactly what's going on here. So these caves, this wasn't created by water, as we're told. Neither were these mountains. This wasn't, this is in China. It wasn't made over 4 billion years. All of these so-called pillars, these mountains, were once connected. And whatever shifted and moved, it broke apart, okay? Now, a guy asked me, he says, he asked me why I think the pyramids, or why I believe the pyramids, or all ancient structures were built by machines. Well, if we go and read Michael Cremo's um, book, it's called De Devolution, right? Human Devolution by Michael Cremo. Go check it out. He's talking about that there were machines that created these pyramids. Because if you look at these blocks here, these blocks are bigger than their, their body. Now, we're told that slaves built this, which is 100% bullshit. Uh, aliens built it. I don't believe that either. Uh... I believe that they had machines. What's so hard to believe about that? That's how most things are built these days, with machines. Okay, so, you know, if there were slaves, how the hell they bring these heavy-ass blocks way up there? Okay, now they were totally built a ramp. The History Channel said he built a ramp. That's bullshit, because what, what can build a ramp 60 stories up that can get them up there to put ladies' blocks down? They had machines, okay? And anything that could, these, these mountains here, in this mountain is a car. Actually, let me hide that. This mountain is a carving inside the mountain, and it's put really nice in there. Okay, and what what do you think they use shovels and, and a chisel to chisel this out and go through? No, they had machines. See, our concept of history and everything is a one hundred percent lie, and we don't know what the truth is. All right, so now here we know the Earth is flat. Okay. We already know that, and oh, now we're going to talk about poverty too. Let, let's get to poverty. See, no, no overpopulation. Oh, and while we get to poverty, oh, human growth population. This is a good one, right? So we're told that, uh, you know, all of the population just suddenly grew and is going to shoot up to seven billion, right? Or is already at seven billion. Now here's a guy named Cipher. <coughs> he was from the Matrix. He wanted to go back in the Matrix because. He liked his meat, just like we like our poison that kills us, our dead meat. He liked his. He wanted to go back to living the illusion. He didn't want to live in reality, okay? And, um, you know, he sold more for yourself. And so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I'm trying to move fast here, but this is what's coming. This is what's coming because the water is rising because the earth is cracking. I'm, we'll deal with that later. But, um... All right, let's go right over here. Okay, let's take a look down here. And, you know, I'm, I'm setting up, oh, here we're going to go. This is home, this girl, she's homeless, and we shouldn't have homelessness in America, but this is the world that you live on. You live on a giant Monopoly board, okay? You live on a giant Monopoly board, and wherever you move, you're going to be taxed the hell out of, okay? And uh, that's what's the cause of all the animal abuse. Well, the homelessness, look how we treat our vets. Uh, poverty in Africa and all across the world. Women and children being abused. It's just horrible. It's just horrible, okay? And this is Neil. He's come to tell you the damn truth. And uh, here are six steps what you got to do. Let me try to squeeze this in so I don't have to make a part two of this shit. All right, so what do you do? Uh, first, you get off the grid. Get off the grid. Uh, secondly, move south because the north is, is about to get really cold and the more, north is about to be destroyed. Live by alone your means. Don't waste money. Buy as much land as you can. Uh, question everything. Believe nothing unless you can verify the experiment yourself. And trust no one completely. Okay, this is what you do. All right, so I hope you guys this. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed this little museum. Um, I'll be back for another video and um, I'll see you guys later. Peace.